Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching today. We're doing a watercolor painting today. You've probably seen it on the channel here if you're watching before we started up. And uh, it's kind of a beautiful photograph that I picked up from a photographer on uh, Photos for Artists on the Facebook page. And uh, I'm going to try to do it justice today. It's a nice winter scene. It's kind of cool, um, has a mood to it. So I'm going to try to invoke this mood of coolness and uh, and a winter scene and uh, we'll see if we can make it work. Uh, okay so here is the original photo <clears throat> and uh, it's really really long it's a portrait format and uh, and it's uh, really too big for the format that I use. I had to crop it down to sort of make it fit my 11 by 14 uh, painting size aspect ratio so um, here is the uh, 11 by 14 version of it. You see I cropped off a bit of the bottom. I took a little bit off the top. Um, it still probably has this horizon almost in the middle, which is not perfect, but it, uh, it kind of looks nice on this, uh, on this photo. The other thing I did with the photo in Photoshop, <clears throat> you can do this in any kind of a photo manipulation uh, program is I, I brightened it way up. I took it almost to white and then I started backing it down and what this does is it takes a lot of the black out of the photo that many cameras, almost all digital cameras will do to your photographs, particularly if they're an evening scene or a silhouette or you're taking a uh, view into the sun. Uh, they always turn up, put a lot of black in it, and that's not great for trying to make a, a painting out of it. So by using the brightness control, I brightened it way up, and you can see the the lay of the uh, the trees on the right side. You can kind of see how the trees on the left side are formulated, formed, um, and you can see the other darks in there that uh, show up, even though the uh, the reflections are totally gone. Uh, the sky is white. Um, and you can't really see the outline of the mountains too well, but you can see that dark black area. So I use that to sort of tell me that uh, there are what things are in there. So it helps me as I try to uh, do the painting because I don't want to just paint it all black. That's not <clears throat> it's not a very great looking painting if you just put a big black ribbon across the middle of it. And here is the grid. Um, you can always get the grid from uh, the uh, <clears throat> link that I've shown you before. Uh, to put this 4x5 grid on your uh, photograph and uh, so I do that and uh, those photographs, the original and the grid are both on my website. There will be links down below this for you to pick those up. Actually there are even in the one you're watching there's links. Um, and I did take the time to do a value map of this. You see the big black ribbon across the middle. Um, so I want to try to lighten that up in some areas. I don't want that grid to be or that uh, black ribbon to be totally uh, all the way across there. It kind of cuts the painting in half. So I'm going to try to see if I can modify that a little bit. Um, the other thing I did was I, I, I uh, put the sketch on. I'm going to talk to you about the sketch when I get back to the easel, but I used some of this. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, called white chalk, even though it was not white, it was blue. And I tested it to see that it would be soluble with my watercolors. And so I put a little, uh, just a quick little flash demo together. I put a uh, some some of you can see some of the uh, the chalk there on the left side and when I put water over it and paint over it 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 sort of disappears and dissolves into the paper so, or into the paint so you don't see harsh lines there like you might see from graphite or other types of uh, sketch, uh, sketch uh, methods. So uh, let me go back now to the easel and I'll go take you through our brushes and paints. Okay, so I'm back at my easel now and uh, here's the paints. You see here I have a, uh, a uh, ruler and I have this charcoal white. It's called charcoal white even though it comes in several colors. It's made by General Pencil Corporation um, and uh, see if you can see it in this camera. Uh, but it's blue. So uh, it really worked nicely to uh, to put this sketch on here. Using the grid I just sort of <clears throat> lightly put it on. I also put the grid on here and before I put the grid I have this template that I made. It's really just hardboard off the back of a palette uh, paper <clears throat> and uh, I made it to fit scaled to my 11 by 14 paper so that um, it's it's like two and three quarters inches wide and so I can just put it draw a light line there 
put these vertical bars on, do the same this way, and it always ends up to be four by five, which is the grid that I put on my uh, my uh, photo when I overlaid it. And uh, that's a nice little easy tool to have. Um, I used to use that when I taught my oil painting classes. Everybody had 11 by 14 canvas, and to put a grid on, we just used a, a template like that. So that's a nice little tip for you to uh, to uh, use when you're trying to get something scaled to the right aspect ratio. And many times you have to do that with these photos because uh, they uh, they rarely are the exact ratio that you want for your painting. So anyway, uh, that's a little tip there. The, the uh, sketch was put on with this blue char charcoal, um, and uh, I will be it will be dissolving hopefully in, into the painting as we go. All right, let me go back to the uh, palette here <clears throat> and show you. Um, I also use this to draw my lines with if I was just measuring them out, but I didn't do that here. I used the template. Um, okay, let me get this stuff out of the way here. All right. Um, the uh, brushes, you've heard me talk about. I have my Sterling Edwards palette. I have my Sterling Edwards brushes, these uh, large bristle brushes, a small, medium, and a large. Um, they uh, are great for blending, great for putting on lots of water. Uh, I have a couple of flats. I have a uh, one inch flat, half inch flat. I have uh, three rounds here, a 12, an 8, and a 4, and I have a script liner. So I don't know if I'll use all those. I may not use all those at all, but uh, that's what we have to work with, and uh, that's I'm going to stick with those. So let me go through the paints now very quickly. These are Holbein paints, transparent watercolors, very beautiful. We have Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep, Royal Blue, Permanent Violet, Green Gray, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Lemon Yellow. <clears throat> so with this painting, I'm probably going to stick with my uh, bright rose over here for most of my uh, the pinks in here. I'll probably be using some of the blue, maybe this uh, violet over here, permanent violet, and my ultramarine blue, and then some darks from Payne Gray, Payne's Gray. I probably aren't not going to need any other colors at all uh, from what I have here. So um, I want to get started, and I want to get us uh, zoomed in here so you can see the uh, see this uh, thing without having to have too much trouble get it set up here and we're getting ready to go all right uh, let's put it over just a little so I'll leave this actually I've got room on this uh, doing this po portrait format size here uh, we've got, I've got room to uh, leave the gridded photo over here so I'll kind of refer to that as we as we paint along so uh, hopefully that's it if you have any questions please put them in the in the chat window here and uh, I'll uh, see if I can answer them and uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, chat back and forth. So let me, I'm going to start by putting some uh, clear water on this uh, paper and I'm going to use my uh, big uh, one inch, it's actually a small, but it's really a, over a one inch, almost one and a half inch uh, brush. Um, and we're going to just wet the top of this where the uh, sky is going to go. I want the sky to be very soft. Um, I, don't, I didn't zoom in on this so you could actually see the sketch, but it's there. Let me take a second and do that real qu quickly here so you can see you can see how light this blue is. Um, and as I put this water on, the blue is sort of dissolving. So it actually will um, sort of uh, blend into the, uh, the paint on the paper. Um, we're going to have very few, very few spots of white on this paper. Um, it's going to be mostly shades of blue and, and gray, that sort of thing. And uh, so let me back up now and get it back <clears throat> set up. All right, there we go. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm going to start putting in this sky very lightly, very loose and wet. Um, I think I'm going to just try to start with this uh, permanent violet here. And uh, if I need a little more blue in it, I'll put some blue in it from uh, Ultra Blue. But uh, just kind of put this in very lightly across here. It um, needs to be wet. It needs to uh, come down to the top of this 
mounted range here and uh, I want to sort of turn it pink a little bit. I'm going to do some of this uh, bright rose and uh, start putting a little of that in right down here. Um, and um, it will soften off. Hopefully it's going to uh, Oh, how how that's uh, doesn't show up very well on there. I'm going to put some more of that bright rose in here. Um, let it sort of blend down, blend in, <clears throat> and uh, even redder down here at the bottom, maybe. Um, and it will lighten up, as you know. This will these will uh, colors will soften a lot um, as they dry so as long as I can keep it wet I can keep this paint moving around and uh, hopefully get it to uh, I'm going to come back and get a little ultra blue now and just while it's still wet come back and put just a few more touches of blue in here which I didn't put in to start with put a few of those here like this and some over here All right, so I'm getting those three colors in the sky. I don't want hard lines. I want this to be all soft and uh, run together um, so that I don't have uh, specific hard lines. Actually, I'm seeing hard lines up there, but that's the embossing that's on the paper up here, uh, which I didn't count on. All right, <clears throat> let's see here if I can just sort of feather this a little bit. I'm going to put in a few um, more clouds here. I want to get some of this circular motion going on. These things have a nice fluffy nest to them. And um, I want that to sort of come through if I can. And so I'm trying to make those circular marks. That just this uh, bristle brush is really good for that. Um, and uh, Hopefully it's going to blend together and blur together so it all looks like a nice soft sky. It may not be dark enough actually. I may need to put a little more of this red in here. The thing I tell you all the time is to do the skies and get out of there. And I keep going back with a few more bits here. All right. I just don't want to see straight lines. I see a straight line across there. I don't like that. Okay. This may be a very fast painting, folks. But, um, I don't have a lot of objects in here today. Sometimes I drag you on for an hour for some of my details, which I've done before, but I, uh, I'm not going to do that today. It's going to be probably kind of fast and furious, pretty loose. So uh, let's get my... Uh, half inch brush now I'm going to start putting in some of the mountain back here um, I see some water getting a hard edge right here I don't like that let me get some clear water and soft, soften that out a little bit maybe just a little more of my pink in here because I paint vertically like this I have a little more trouble with getting these these lines and runs and hard edges and that sort of thing. Little cauliflower starting right here. I'm just going to touch that up a little bit. Um, leave the sky alone. All right, we have some more of this color, this uh, bright rose, I'm calling it. It's down here in the water. Um, and uh, I may just put a little bit of that in to just remind me where that goes. There's some here. And there's some more. Now I'm doing uh, wet on dry. <clears throat> so these aren't going to be as soft edged as they were up above because it's not wet before. And there's another coming down like this. Um, so we'll just put that in and let it uh, sort of run and flow wherever it wants to might get my spray bottle out and sort of loosen those edges up a little bit so that they're not totally 
um, hard hard edges. Um, I'll leave that. We'll come. I'm sure I'm going to come back to that and hit it again. Uh, but let's leave that for now. All right. So those are the two colors I've used: my blue, my uh, I've used my permanent violet, three colors: my ultramarine blue and bright rose. So you don't have to have those exact colors, but if you have a uh, something close, you can uh, copy this painting with those colors, and uh, it'll be fine. All right, I'm going to get some dark now. I'm going to get some of my uh, Payne's Gray here with my half inch brush. And I'm going to come in here and start putting in a few of these, this mountain top here. And uh, it actually does come up and sort of make these kind of things. The tops are sort of hard edge. Um, and then there's snow underneath them, so I'm going to try to leave the paper white underneath that. And as we come down, there's another little bump up here. Comes down and this is all sort of dark. Payne's Gray, folks, that's all this is. Okay. So I've got that ridge line sort of started. I can come back now and start putting in some other, darken it up just a little bit in some areas. Make it come over this way like that. There's some peaks, some other areas here like this. Very simple, very loose, very fast. Dry brush, pulling it down. And the snow in here, the color of the snow is not really white. I said white paper, but I'm not going to leave white paper in here. Um, let's see here, this has got a little more like that. Uh, where does this come in? There's a second bump. There's another something like right in here. Another. So I'm just sort of putting in the, uh, the darks, and uh, I'll come back over those and uh, <clears throat> if I need to make them darker in some areas, I can do that very easily by just touching them again. I've got a gray, i got a little darker color below, and uh, something like that. I think there was another little bump in here even. All right, so we're getting things that look like snow, even though that's not going to be the color. I'm going to have to gray that snow down or blue it down, I guess. Um, over here in this section, I'm going to get my permanent violet out and mix a little bit of mix a little bit of the uh, burnt uh, Payne's gray with it. And we're going to kind of come here and start putting in these background mountains here. There's a mountain that goes up here. It's really hard to see through the trees, but it's there. So I'm just going to Throw it in and leave some spots with some snow in it, and uh, like that. It's lighter, so it should always appear further back. Hopefully, if our aerial perspective is working right. So it's actually behind this. This one over here. I need. To, I'm going to have to darken this all down, but. Um, I'll just leave that right now. <clears throat> All right. Um, this, I'm going to go back to my uh, Payne's Cray and come in here and sort of darken this down. This needs to be a lot darker here.
start putting in a few tree-like objects along here. A lot of trees coming up. Payne's gray and a little bit of this uh, permanent violet seem to work pretty well. There's a lot of that violet color in here. Um, so I'm just touching with the edge of the brush and putting in these some of these trees here. They're a lot lighter than they are in the photograph. Um, photograph there is totally black and uh, I didn't want it to be totally black. So this whole row of pine trees over here. Just using the edge. Flat brush is great for this. Put some of them together. I don't want them to look like just a fence post up there. I want some of them to connect and some to uh, leave some gaps um, so it looks like it's a little more realistic. And if you sort of jiggle your brush a little bit when you get up to the top, it'll give those types of, uh, looks like the pine trees that they are. Leave some gaps in there, let it sort of uh, come down and it lightens that area up so it looks like there's something going on there. It's not just uh, solid black trees. We do have some snow. I'm going to show some snow in here with these because I think that helps add to the composition. It helps complete the composition because it makes it look like there's uh, it's really, really is snow on these mountains. Um, and I can come back as many times as I want to sort of make this, give it some depth. So very, very simply, very quickly, I'm just putting in a whole bank of trees back there. And as it dries, it lightens up, and then I can come back with another layer of the top, and I'll make you see the more depth. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. We'll come back to it later, sort of finish that off. Something like that. Okay. A lot of those trees are done. All right, now these, um, I'm going to get my ultra blue out. Whoops. Yeah, that's my ultra blue. It's ultra blue deep. So it's really a, a deep blue color. Get some water in it and uh, see if I can start putting in a few. It, it looks like it's too blue to me, too dark. I'm going to try the cobalt blue. I think it's a lighter blue. Now it's got more green in it actually. You see here. Probably need ultra blue light. I'm going to add just a little bit of my gray, gray this, gray with this, and some water, and uh, see what it looks like if I put in some snow up here. Here we've got so we'll put this in if we need some more texture on top of it we can come back with some of that dark just fill it in and uh, lighten it up with a good bit of water. <clears throat> 
these all have to be about the same value. If I have a bunch of whites in there, it's going to look too too stark. It's going to look distorted. I don't I want, don't want any of those whites to look. I don't want them to be pure paper. I guess is what I'm saying. I do want some value change in there. So I'm putting just another little layer over to darken it a little bit in some areas. And if I need some darker, I will come back and do that. All right, I'm getting that pretty well done. A little bit more here. Let's come down and see. This has got a mixture of these colors as well with some... Let's just fill it all in here. And we'll come back and put some dark over it. doesn't have the texture I'm looking for yet. It doesn't have the roughness or the things that look like they're yeah, I'm getting a little bit of it here by putting in some other values. See how the if I can get three values I can start getting start sculpting this to make it look like it's snow coming down this mountain and uh, Okay, that's not too bad. All right, let me come back now and get in some of this uh, <clears throat> pure Payne's gray. And this thing comes all the way down to here. These things are really a lot of dark going on here. I'm going to add just a little of this bright rose to sort of brighten this up, change the color a little bit. I want it to pick up some of this rose color. It's coming over the these mountains. Didn't get a whole lot of rose color in there. So I'm going to go back and drop some more in. So these are trees too. I can just make these all sort of blend together, give them a little bit different uh, size and uh, make them a little smaller. But I'm adding this bit of color, this bright rose that's changing the color. I want them to connect to what's above it. Get some more dark and come in here. This paint's gray doesn't really, it, it does get pretty dark, but it uh, dries a lot lighter than uh, and it looks when you put it on. So this is just a whole bunch of trees and stuff in here. So let's just kind of mix it all up and put all kind of stuff going on here. Rough texture, throw it in. And uh, let this come back there. I want to make sure that goes behind. This starts coming, curving around like this. Need some more water, need some more paint. Getting to the point of some of this looking ugly right now. But we're just going to put this coat on and then let it dry. <clears throat> and uh, see how that works. While it's wet, I can dab in now some some more of these uh, dark shapes. And uh, this is just sort of ad lib. I'm kind of following the, the outline of the shapes, but I'm not trying to paint specific trees or rocks or anything like that. All kind of stuff in here. All right, so it's going to have a little bit different texture than this over here. I don't want it to look identical, um, but I want it to have uh, some distinction so you can tell that there are still trees and stuff in there. I can get some more of my uh, bright rose, darken it down just a little. See what this looks like in here. Yeah, here we're getting a 
and some of this Okay, now I'm, notice how the brush strokes are going. They're going sideways. That's the way. That's the way the uh, land moves. So I want that to look like they're horizontal brush strokes. I want, and that tells you that the land is sort of coming down slightly this way. Sort of a, there's like a low spot here where there's a, a river, I think, that's frozen over. Um, and um, have a few spots in here. May come back and add some more to that. Um, these here are some of the stuff I put in before. See how fast this is going? This is really fun and easy. I want some blue in here. I'm only using this half inch brush after I put the sky in. So um, I want these to sort of start sloping down a little bit. We're kind of looking at it uh, from a distance overhead a little bit. So we will I want these brush strokes to be totally flat, totally horizontal as much as possible. That's what's telling the story here of what's going on with this, this land. So just keep it going. I could be using a much bigger brush, but we've got a little time. We're making really good time here. We've only been going less than 30 minutes. So you can see how this sort of just all sort of turn this corner in a little bit. And we've got some hard edges I want to put in here. Okay, so what are the brush strokes telling you? They're telling you that this is either sloping down or it's flat flattened out. Right? These are beautiful colors when they go together. I really like the way they look. Have some more of that. Red. Get some more of this red in here, and there we go. Just a little more up here. Make this reflection. Sing if we can. Pull this down. Get some things that look like we got water reflections here. Not using very many colors here, folks. I'm just sort of uh, using ultra blue, Payne's gray, bright rose, and uh, permanent violet. We got some darker colors here. Let's see. Let me lighten that up a little bit. Put a little Just water. OK. 
Okay. Alright, let's see if I can figure out what else we need to do. We need to do some more things with this. I think this area over here needs to have just a touch of uh, color between these light glaze. Take out some of that white I left in there on purpose. So they're not too distinct. If you go over them fast, they won't, the paint won't dissolve and uh, won't come back. Um, up here, I'm going to put a few more that color, get some of that rose color showing in some of these areas. So I'm kind of painting the shadows now. We're going to come back and put some really, some dark darks in here, darker darks, I think, uh, to kind of give this more um, more texture. Something like that. It shows that mountain going that way. This mountain's kind of going that way. Putting in a few strokes that kind of help define some things a little better. Um, I don't know, folks, you tell me what you think it needs. I'm uh, getting down to the area where I'm trying to get finished with this very shortly here. I'll put in some dark darks in here. We have some, I guess these are like where the ice and the snow have sort of build up. <clears throat> Got some shadows coming in which help uh, show the, <clears throat> the ice. And then here we sort of blend this together so we don't have a hard edge here but we have a hard edge above. That helps tell the story better. Like there's a hard edge in here and some of this along here. If I got the right place I might be off on my there's some along here. So these darks are <clears throat> helping to <clears throat> outline the water, the water area. And I don't want the bottom to be hard, I want the bottom to be soft. So I'm coming back with just a little bit of clear water, just tickling the bottom so it sort of blends in with the uh, ice and snow that's below it. See how that looks? It even gives it a little reflective quality there. As I look at that. Around here, these things have, there's some more of this. I'm going to put some more dark back in here. needs to be a little more distinct. Like that. So it helps you see that there's sort of a something winding coming down through here like water would be and how it's kind of gotten frozen and put some banks along the side back here. Even darken a little bit of this maybe. All that's helping to tell you that there's a change in the in the plane there's something going on from vertical to horizontal and uh, that all helps tell the story what's going on here just a few darks here and there I see some more blue I'm looking at here in this area I think it needs to be bluer maybe a little more purple in it even in here a little bit of that in, take it, put it there and then get the brush wet and just sort of feather it, feather that edge in so that it doesn't look like we stuck that on. Like that. See how it makes sort of a graded wash type of thing? I just blew it. Fix it here if I can. 
put water over the top of it and it just ran right down on it. All right. Some more reds. This is used to be blended more here. I'm just kind of playing around with this now to see if I can get it to, to look a little more like the photograph, a little more uh, blended, a little more soft, selectively getting hard edges here and there. Um, this has to be a little darker. Like this, same thing, I'll pull it back in. And uh, as I pull it in, it, the paint sort of dries out. And it, it starts giving you those uh, rough, little rough textures across there. All right, I have a really hard edge up here that I don't particularly like. <clears throat> See if I can do something to fix that. Maybe I don't know. These edges. some more, a few more things in here like this, sort of change it up a little. Just putting some shadows in on this mountain so that it looks like we've got, see if I can soften that hard edge. You can always soften a hard edge usually if you have good good paint and good paper, you can soften a hard edge with just putting water on it. If you have cheap paper, it may not work. And if you have paints that are not transparent, it may not look right either. So that's a little bit better um, than it was. So I'm, see what I did there with that little dark shadow. I just put a shadow on this side of the mountain and it helps it look like there's, th that is the, the shadow side. Up here I still see a hard edge up there. You see how that's working? I'm going to have to see if I can fix that a little bit. Same idea. Come up here with some clear water. Soften that edge. Once I soften it, it, it starts to uh, move the paint a little bit, and then I can come back with some other paints and put in things that sort of tie it together. More shadows on the left side. Okay, it's not exactly duplicating the photo, but it's pretty close. Um, this area here looks like we have more, it's a lot less, I think I have more, some more trees I can put in here to uh, make that area a little less like an oval and more like a something, a side of a mountain that's got covered up with trees here. That might be a little better. Okay, I think I'm going to stop on this, folks. I think I've got pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Lindy, a beautiful, uh, more pink toward the top of the mountains. And this area in here, I think you're probably right. Yeah, I haven't stepped back from this and looked at it yet, so I'm uh, at the point where I need to, to do that and see what how it compares with the photo. And uh, you're very exactly right. I do need some more of that pink up there. Some of these uh, reflections here look a little, uh, it looks a little hokey right there. Um, so let's go get some more, clean my brush out. I've done this whole painting with this half inch flat, folks. Um, you don't need a ton of brushes. I got this whole stack of brushes over here and I'm only using one. <clears throat> so let's see here if we can put a little light glaze of some more of this pink in here. And just put it in and then come back and soften that top edge with clear water. Of 
that. Now you don't want that kind of edge on it, right? You want that to be soft and blended. So let's soften it with clear water and blend it up till it hits the other part of the sky. And that is better. I think I still need some more even over here probably. Let's put some more in over there. Be bold. I don't like going back into the skies like this because I tend to, I tend to screw them up, but this needs to have some more attention. As long as you can keep that paint wet and keep it from getting hard edges, it will still look like the sky. But you have to be on top of it. You can't... Uh, I think the area you might have been talking about, Lindy's over here, even now that I look at this again. I think you're talking about more pink over here. So let's throw some more pink in there. Same deal over here. Yeah. Soften it off. Water, clear water. Let it run, run back. Just so you don't have too much water and make it cause back runs, cauliflowers, whatever they're called. Yeah, I've probably messed with this sky more than I've messed with skies in a long time. I don't tend to go back into them much very often. Painting vertically makes it tougher. If I were painting on flat surface, I could take this and tip it up and kind of keep the paint going where I wanted it to. Uh, but uh, it's not possible here. I'm going to put some more of this icy looking stuff coming out this way. Another case for blending. A little bit of a hard edge and then blend it into reflection here. That's a little bit better, I think. Over here, I'm going to put in a little bit more of that. Same idea. So I do have some white paper in there. It's not totally white, but it's pretty close. So I'm just going to fill that in, let it all run together. This area up here could probably have just a touch more pink. It's almost too much pink. Whoa, watch out. There we go. It looks uh, looks brighter to me when I'm up close to it here than it does on the monitor behind me and what the camera's picking up. The camera's picking it up much lighter than it appears here. Uh, so it distorts my thinking when I look back at the monitor and I think it's not, uh, not getting enough pink in there. So we have some these vertical brush strokes here, wherever you can see them, will help tell you this is some reflections. Over here, I want to put this edge back in place over here. I want a hard edge here, sort of come around and make it more distinct so you know that there's the side of this river. Coming in here, probably do the same thing right in this area, sort of make it something like that. It helps distinguish it just a little more. And uh, I need to stop. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty close to. Uh, what I was trying to do here, what I was trying to show you. There's, sh there's shadow coming this way and yet there's reflection coming from behind. So trying to make all of that work 
is a, is a bit of a, a bit of a job, but that's why we like to do this. Okay, I think if you see anything else that needs, let me know. But I think I'm going to uh, say that's about enough. <clears throat> I, as soon as I say that, I see something that needs some attention here. I might mess with this a little bit after we stop the broadcast, but pretty much I'm going to call that finished. Get my uh, script liner brush out here and get some starker paint here. Yeah, these colors are pretty. That's what attracted me to this whole uh, photograph was the pinks and the blues and the purples and all of that. Let's see if we've got room here. All right, I have signed it. Now i got to stop. Okay, folks, that's about 45 minutes, I guess. Uh, hope you like that and uh, hope you can give it a try. Get the uh, Get the links on my website for both the original photo, the grid, and uh, the value map are all out there. So uh, you can download those and use them. And, uh, and I hope you give this a try. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And if you are, uh, share this with some of your friends. Let them, uh, if you like my work, um, check out my Facebook page. Check out my uh, website, as I mentioned. Uh, also, you can... Uh, Check my Patreon site out. The links are all below here. And uh, some of the products I use, I have a link for a little Amazon store that I've set up that has some of the products that I use here, some of the things I recommend. So uh, give those a look if you got a chance. And uh, so until I see you again, uh, I think this is all I want to say. Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.